сан байцгаан нөө хүн төзөгчтэй өнөөдөр манай де факто нэвтрүүлгийн зочноо шведийн алдартай эрдэмтэн уран илтгэгч энэ the idea book for you, Mongolor, city for the Gidget, Saikon or Chodots in Nomin, the Hoch, knowing Frederick Haren or Svena. Frederick Haren, city for the Nomin, the Hoch, Ilkich Bash. She waiting is Kuch Frederick Haren, Dishin Jarro or Hoyman Garo Skiltabch, Sorot the Humber Walch, Business Rikchit Botan, Shiner Sitchit, Putelch Music, Amchelton Kutulk Sorochim. Tirer hit hidden compound business to Wilco Rajaltakba, Sanara Hirkum business will hear Botok Tatar to Wilco took, Midelin Bawasak at Sostak. Tuni business in Tatar Pits Nomod, Ashagor Sora, Tiruch Ben Nomod in Chisatan, Tokmot Pichit to Bogot, Mongol Hilter or Stuartan Garson, Sitki Horsak Noman, Aronsran Hitro, who will. Good evening. Uh, good evening. So great to see you here in Mongolia, and I know thanks to this book, translations be made by Mrs. Hodlan. You are here, and this is a wonderful book, and the original name is The Idea. Let's talk about from where the idea came from, the book idea came from itself. I, I, can I say by start, the, the name of the book is the idea book originally, but in Mongolian, it apparently didn't work to do a tr direct translation. So if I understand it correctly, in Mongolian, it's now called the art of thinking, uh -huh. which I find a very, very beautiful uh, translation of the book, because this book is really about the art of thinking. And this art of thinking is really reflecting what is inside. Yes. So tell us. So I, I'm what very happy with the Mongolian name. Okay. So uh, the, the background of the book, actually came because I was doing a lot of talks and seminars on creativity, right. but uh, I had one client who asked me, Frederick, do you have any more material? Do you have a book? And I said, yes, of course I have a book. And they said, we will we'll buy 400 copies. I didn't have a book, I lied to him. So then I said uh, to him, this was in uh, May, I said, I don't think you should give the book now. It's better if you give it in September when they come back from vacation. And then I went home and I, I said, I have to write a book. So in the summer, the whole summer, I wrote a book. Uh, Which year? This, oh, this is actually a long time ago. Uh -huh. The first, uh, first version of the idea book came out in 2001 or something. Okay. And now uh, uh, I've updated it a little bit, but the uh -huh. book is, is really about how to think. And that's, that's an evergreen topic. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, I wrote it because they wanted to, to have the book and, and that, and since then, I've never written a book unless someone first asked to buy it. I don't write a book until, I, I have a lot of different book ideas. I, I have 10, I'm sure you're the same. So I have maybe 10 books I'm planning to write, but I don't decide to actually write a book before someone says, if you write this book, I'm gonna buy a lot. So the last book I, I wrote, um, I sold 2000 copies at $22 each before I wrote a, a word. So I, have, I made $44,000 before I wrote the first word, which covers all the production and all the printing and the design. And, and I learned that you sh if you can't sell a book before it exists, you cannot sell the book when it exists also. Wow. Mm. The, well, uh, why this idea itself so much? Uh, the idea of how to learn yeah. thinking, thinking yeah. differently. Yeah you know, finding everywhere some new ideas. And in fact, you did it and you, you sold your first company called Internet Marketing. It, uh, it was an internet marketing company, yeah. Yes. What the company was called Reference. Re Reference. Yeah. And uh, you made that uh, idea with the, at the university when you were graduating in, in uh, Sweden, right? Yes. In Sweden. Right. And after how many years you have sold that company? I started it when I was 27. I sold, sold it when I was 32. 27. So you, at the 32 years old, you sold your company for 5 million US dollars. Yeah, correct. And after that, you have decided whatever you like in the world yes. to do, right? Yes. To, to I, I, I said, what, what is, now I can, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? I want to start another company. Right. But what was the most fun part of running the company? And I said, it was the speaking. So I, when I was running the company, I would also go and speak, because this was an internet company, and we're talking 1990s. 
So I would go to conferences and I would explain to businesses why they need to look at this internet thing. I loved speaking. And I always, when I explained to people why I speak, I said, the president of America, the most powerful man in the free world, after they are presidents, what do they normally do? Write a book. And speak. And speak, yes. Yeah. I said, it's probably a very good job. So, and I, I love it. I do so much research, I travel the world, and then when I do my talks, I meet business people, and I learn even more, right? Yep. So next week, I'm going to speak, I do three speeches in 30 hours. In, in 30 hours, I do three speeches. Uh -huh. The first one is for chicken feeders in Hong Kong, uh -huh. people who breed chickens. Uh -huh. Then I speak, I do a speech for, in the afternoon, also in Hong Kong, for clients of a bank. Okay. Then I jump on a plane, I fly into Munich, and then I speak for the learning and development managers of BMW cars. Yes. So I will learn about chicken feeding, I will learn about banking, fi f fintech, yes. and I will learn about what's happening in the car industry right now. And yet you are speaking to them. They pay me. The, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking about BMW, you have been their only sole speaker for their executives every year almost. I, I do a lot of work for BMW. Yes. I do a lot of work for car companies right now. Because what is the reason? Oh, it's easy. Uh, I speak about creativity and change. I've been doing it for 22 years. Uh -huh. But right now, 2017, there's so many industries that be, are being disrupted and car industry is one. Yes. You have electric, electrification of the car yes. from petrol to electric. Yes. You have self-driving car. Yes. You have the software of the car, which means yes. car companies used to be hardware companies. Now they need to be software companies. Yes. And because Tesla don't have dealers, Tesla sells themselves. Yes. Suddenly, the, the cost, uh, car companies need to be customer focused, not dealer focused, uh -huh. which is a totally different mindset. Uh -huh. So you have four huge mega trends. Oh, and then you have Uber, the car sharing. Yes. So instead of owning a car, you rent a car yes. or you borrow a car for a short while. Yes. Each of these trends are huge, yes. but these are all happening at the same time for the car industry. That, exactly. And, and, and it, this is, of course, it's disruptive, uh -huh. but I, could, I, could, I, I, I can talk uh, equally about the chicken feeding industry. And yes. it's the same thing, it's the same story. Uh -huh. All industries, right? But however, there are certain common things in between whatever industry you talk, which requires for further competitiveness, you need new idea, creativity. Exactly. Which, um, I, oh, I also uh, speaking, I mean, I'm also giving lectures yes. here in the country and sometimes abroad about Mongolia, mm. so in some universities. Yep. Uh, but however, I see, we are living in the middle of all, it's the beginning of third revolution, yeah. IT revolution, yes. right? And we don't have any clue what kind of changes ahead yes. of us. And this recently IMF statistics was saying that 65% of primary school commerce today yeah. will have a jobs, 65% of them when they will go to jobs, yeah. the, these jobs are not existing. Oh, yes. yes, yes, correct. I agree. I mean, how come this majority of workforce, yeah. they will do the, something that we have no idea. Yes. So Exciting, isn't it? In that context, yes. Please, uh, now let's talk about more creativity for young men, because Mongolia now people are thinking about, when we talk about future, they think about mining. Uh -huh. But I suggest, also we are landlocked, okay. but I suggest, look, we are landlocked, but not mind-locked, mm. which gives uh, the whole world, the global world to your table, to yeah. your computer. Absolutely. How to address that issue? What you would be your idea to them, advice? Okay, first of all, I totally agree with you. The fact that you are landlocked means nothing anymore. It meant a lot before, because before if you would travel on uh, ships and, and then it was a disadvantage to be landlocked. Today, uh, knowledge, fact, ideas spread through, I uh, through internet and through airplanes, not ships anymore, right? <laughs> yes. I was in Lisbon, uh, two, I, I flew straight from Lisbon here. I just changed one airplane in uh, Istanbul. Uh -huh. You can fly anywhere 
from anywhere. The world is now connected. Yes. And because of the internet, much, much more so. Yes. That means that the fact that you used to be ma landlocked, men uh, like mentally, yes. means nothing anymore. Yes. It's, it's an excuse. You should not even say it anymore. You should just ah. stop saying it. It was true for the previous generation. Yeah. It's not true for this generation. Exactly. It's like saying, my mother was short, I'm tall. Therefore, uh, like saying your mother is short and you are tall. And I say, my mother used to be short. Who cares if your mother is short? You yes. are tall. You can play basketball, yes. right? Yeah. So this mindset just has to change yes. in, in Mongolia. I think it's actually I think the two uh, okay this might sound a little bit too much but I honest okay like this why did I launch my book the six, this is the 17th language okay. I do my book in Mongolia Mongolian is maybe the smallest market for a business book there are three million right. people you only speak this language more or less in this country yes. why I haven't done a French version I haven't done a Spanish version why do I a Mongolian version before French or, or, or Spanish? Why? Curiosity. Yes, partly. And I like to be different. But the main reason is I wanted to go to Mongolia because I wanted to learn about Mongolian creativity, mm -hmm. the, nomadic mind, the nomadic way of thinking creatively. That's uh -huh. what I wanted. Uh -huh. I truly believe uh -huh. that Mongolia could be one of the most creative countries on earth. And I say this because Sweden is one of the most creative countries on earth. And Sweden is very similar to Mongolia. Yes. We're, very, we're up in the north, we have long dark winters, uh -huh. we are uh, very few people, very spread out. Uh -huh. And so why can a country like Sweden, scarcely populated up in the north, with, in the you know, Arctic Circle, how can we be one of the most creative countries on earth? We're not Silicon Valley, but we are, right? Because we have a way of thinking. And great ideas come when you have time to think, when you're by yourself. When you're, when you're always challenged to solve problems, which you are forced to do if you live in a country like Mongolia or Sweden. So how can Sweden be one of the most creative countries on earth and how can Mongolia not be? That was the paradox I wanted to figure out. Okay. And I think we start with the negative. Why is Mongolia, I'm not saying you're not creative, I'm saying why are you not famous for being a creative, innovative country? How to make this nation into creative? Yes. So what we talked about before, number one, change of mindset. You're not okay. landlocked anymore. anymore okay. yeah? You are very good. You speak many languages here. You're connected True. to the Russian culture. Yes. You're connected to the Chinese culture. Yes. And you have your own culture, yes. right? But what you need to do is you also need to, uh, to add the, 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 you need to learn from the rest of the world. You need yes. to say what's happening in Indonesia right now, what's happening in Brazil, what's happening in Germany. Yes. Much more than you're doing now. Yes. And, so, and you need to become better in English. Yes. Right? Because when you're better in English, then the rest of the world opens up. Yes. Because you can talk to a Brazilian. Yes. Now, uh, you can even talk to a German and a French today in English. In English. The, 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 what's, you know, early last century, many Sweden had left yes. Sweden. Yes. And then learned English. Yeah. And they come back some. Yeah. They changed policy. Yeah. And you created ABBA. Yes. Volvo. Yes. This is a very good observation. A hundred years ago, 25% of the Swedish population left. Now ask yourself, which 25% left? Yep, most energetic. Energetic, risk-taking, yes. creativity, creative. The same happening in 150,000 Mongolians left Mongolia. Exactly. So how can Sweden be such a creative country if all the creative people left? Uh -huh. If 25% if of the tallest Swedish people would go to America and play basketball, what happens to the average height of Sweden? Yes. Become short. Yes. So how can a country like Sweden be so creative if all the creative people left? That's an interesting thought. Uh -huh. But you know why? Because some of the people left, like L.M. Eriksson, Yes. Ericsson, you know Ericsson, yes. mobile phone. Ellen Ericsson well, left Sweden, went to America, saw the telephone, went back to Sweden, invented Ericsson. Yes. The founder of Volvo went to Germany, saw the, the truck industry, uh, uh, no, uh, went to America, saw the, the truck industry, went back, started Volvo. SKF, the bearing company, yes. went to Germany, saw the bearing company, went back, started bearing. Alfred Nobel, famous uh -huh. Nobel Prize, yes. born in Sweden, moved to Finland, moved to Russia, moved to Germany, invented dynamite in Germany. It's a German invention, not a Swedish invention. Uh -huh. Moved to America, died in France, uh -huh. but had a factory and, and work in Sweden. Uh -huh. So they, they saw these ideas. So first of all, the immigration is good. Yes. Yeah, great, okay. Great. Because they bring back, they leave, even if they don't come back, they will, they will turn, they will give back ideas. So first, immigration is good. Second, look at beyond China and Russia. Yes. Look at the rest of the world. Yes. Learn English. Yes. What is third? 
Third, <laughs> I have to say this, learn creativity techniques, because I, I wrote the book about it. Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, I do, I do <laughs> read my book, uh, <laughs> <laughs> 63 creativity exercises. But okay. I'm, all, I'm actually a bit serious, because uh, most, I think everyone is very, I think everyone has the potential to be creative. I'm absolutely convinced. But most people have never been taught how. So if you have, it's like anything else. If you don't know how to dance, or if you think you cannot dance, you will not dance. Yes. If someone teaches you how to dance, just one dance, yes. after that you're okay. Yes. If, you d no, if you don't think you can play any instrument, and someone teaches you yes. how to play instruments, yes. now so you, you know how to play. After that, so you, you pick up other instruments. What is the number one? So you need, you, to, you need to learn some creativity techniques. Uh, yes. Because when you do, you unlock something in, in you, yes. and now you think you're creative, yes. and now you will learn other techniques and you're off. Just like dancing and playing an instrument or anything else, learning a language. So creativity is a kind of skills, you think? Of course it's a skill. <laughs> but uh, it is a skill, but my father was a musician, a teacher and a musician. And he, he had a good quote. He said, music? Uh, all, all kinds, but uh, Swedish country music mostly. Ah, okay. He played like 10 instruments. Ah. Uh, he said once, you can teach anyone to play an instrument, uh -huh. but the only way to teach someone to be a musician uh -huh. it's in, is, is through inspiration. Uh -huh. It's a very good quote. Wow, wow. And you, you can teach anyone, uh, like you, you cannot be a musician unless you learn to play an instrument. And yes. you cannot be creative unless you learn creativity techniques. But it's not enough to learn creativity techniques. Creative people are making sure they get inspired by other creative people, yes. other ideas. And that's why it's so important. Um, oh, I tell you a story. When I moved to China, I'm from Sweden. I moved to China. Now I live in Singapore. I'm married to a Filipino. When I, ca when I came to China, I, w I knew no one. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have any, the first few months I have no friends. I didn't want to meet with the Swedish people. I wanted to just, so I was, many times I went to a Chinese restaurant. I was the only Westerner. I didn't speak Chinese. I would point at the menu. I hope it was tasty. Then they served the food. But they, they would serve me two chopsticks, a fork, a knife, and a spoon. Because they didn't know how, how I wanted to eat it. And for the first, I had this epiphany in my life. I said, this is the first time I decide myself how I want to eat this dish. Now imagine if we did this for everything everything in our lives. What is the best way to do a TV show, to launch a book, to, to mine, whatever, right? Best that way you choose. The best way that humanity up today has come up to solve our problems. And how can we start with that and come up with an even better way of doing it? Great, okay. So what would be the next then? Oh, but I need to talk about this because you were talking about, you said the Mongolian men and you're talking about mining and yes. the mindset, right? Yes. I'm abs I have to comment on this because <laughs> you look at what's happening, the mining is going to be run by machines. Yes. It's more and more. The jobs are not going to be in mining. Yes. The machines are going to do the mining. Yes. That's, a, that's the sad truth of that part of it. So humans need to do something else. So the computers, the machines are very good uh -huh. at, um, the, the machines are very good at taking the jobs of the human body. Yep. The machines are stronger than us. Mm -hmm. True. Now, the computers are now very quickly becoming better at us at doing our left brain work. Okay. Are you, have you noticed what's happening like just in the last couple of years when yes. it comes to machine learning and artificial intelligence? The computers are now like analyzing tax returns, for example. Yes. Not, not just reading the data, analyzing yes. the data. The computers are now better. Even um, speech recognition and translation, yes. the computers now begin better at translations uh -huh. than, and, than some humans already. The so the left, left brain work of just, yes. you know, what we, what, yes. <coughs> what we call it a logical mindset. The computer is, yes. go, is already and soon way better than us. Okay. So the machines are much stronger than us and, and the computers are much better at left brain thinking than us. Then what's left for us? Right brain. <laughs> Exactly, okay. yes. So, so, if the industrial age, them took the, the machines took the work of the body, and in the information age, the computer will take the job of the brain. Okay. So in the next age, we will have to do the work of the heart. Yes. And no machine can ever take that away. <laughs> but 
we haven't even started to think about what that kind of work could be. Just as if we didn't think about the kind of work we could do with our brains when we were busy doing our work with our bodies. We did brain work a thousand years yes. ago, but of course not as much as we did do now, because yes. we were so busy, we had to do the, we had to do the body work. Yes. Now we're busy doing the brain work, yes. because we don't have to do the body work. Yes. So we're not thinking about the, how we could work with creativity in our hearts. Yes. But imagine if we didn't have to think about that. The machine does the, the work, the computer does the left. We can only focus on the right brain and the heart, the, the emotional. Yes. Uh, imagine what we could, the kind of products and services yes. and, and solutions we could develop. It's, yes. I'm very positive. Please tell us some examples. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think we would be much, much happier. Mm. Uh, people say computer is going to take all our jobs. Mm. Of course they're not. We're gonna, like you said, we're going to invent 65% of the jobs will be new. What yes. kind of jobs will that be? It will be taking, making sure people are happy, pe that people are feeling loved. Yes. We will have five times more people in schools taking, yes. uh, take, making sure we the kids more grow. Degrees, we have more knowledge. We spend more time with our kids. Yes. We make them more, uh, ethical and, uh, and uh, emotional thinking human beings. Come on, so the this is not the time you, uh, you, you, yeah, of course. You, now, remember during industrial period, the people were working almost 20 hours, they were refusing, they were fight, etc. Yeah. That finally we set up with eight hours uh, working day. Yeah. And now slowly we are cutting. Weekend is cut, Friday, even in France now they want to cut away Friday. Yeah. So now within what, 20, 20 plus five hours, and now with computers taking the our left brain, this but work. some people are saying, therefore, everyone should just get m uh, money from the government and no one has to work. I don't believe this at all. I yes. think people, sh as human beings, mm -hmm. we like to work. Yeah. We like to feel uh, needed. We like to see progress. We like, like uh, you, you, go, you go into nomadic tribe. They are yes. going to be working. Peop and if they're not working, and people are unhappy. And yet, with that revolution, with the fast change that is coming to every country, every corner of the world, including Mongolia, yeah. They are taking away now, like our cell phone, taking away many things. Yeah. But yet we are Mongolians. Yeah. Yet we have a nomadic thinking. Yeah. And I think our way of thinking cannot be that fast changing. Oh, that's the opposite. So. The nomadic mind, the nomadic brain is perfect for creativity. Perfect. That's what I've learned. I, I told you, I went to Mongolia. I launched this book in Mongolian before French because I wanted to learn about how is the nomadic creative mind working. In a fast-changing world like this, the nomadic mind is perfect. I can, what I've learned about the nomadic mind, I, I interviewed one woman yesterday. She's the head of a branding for Mongolia. Okay. Uh, and she had a very good quote. She said, she, people think nomadic means a physical movement of the body. Like you're homeless, you're always traveling. Uh -huh. That's not the meaning. That's the wrong meaning of nomadic. Uh -huh. Nomadic means in search of greener pastures. Uh -huh. A nomad says, I live here until there's a better place somewhere else. Then I go there, uh -huh. right? And therefore I have to travel. Uh -huh. But nomad doesn't mean traveler. It means looking for better solutions. That's what it means, uh -huh. literally. The meaning of the word nomad, in search of greener pastures. Live for better solutions. Le yes, live yeah. for even better solutions. If there are no better solutions, the nomad stays right where they are. They're not always traveling. So you think it is intrinsic kind of capacity for Mongolians to find better solutions. Exactly. So she said, a no nomad, people think wrongly that nomadic means a physical movement of the body. She says that's wrong. It means a, phys it means a movement of the mind, which is beautiful. <laughs> okay. And that is creativity. Yes. This is, then, because then also, an, uh, uh, an, when does the nomad decide to move? Because a nomad always has uh, a feeling, always looking at nature, always thinking, what's going on? Is, is it becoming colder? Are the, uh, is, the, is the grass dying? The, you're always feeling what's going on. And that is exactly what a creative person has to do. What's going on in the world? Are people buying electric cars? Are people buying electric cars? Well, then, well, does it mean that nomadic kid, young man, yeah. grown up nomadic, knowing the program application, yeah. they may suggest something interesting than non-nomadic people? Absolutely. I think the Western brain is a logical brain, was very good for the information age. But the new age that we are going in is a very, very fast changing environment where you can't just be settled in how things are. Everything is going to change. Who's best positioned to handle that world? Someone who's 
good at always looking at what's happening and always adapting to change. And another person I inter I've interviewed a lot of different people now to get a sense of what is nomadic creativity. Another person said, uh, because we're always sensing what's going on, we all know exactly what's happening around us. For example, uh, we know the wolf, right? We know how he behaves, we know everything about the wolf, we know everything about everything about us in our nature. Because if we don't, we die. Which means we're not afraid of the wolf, because we know the wolf. Fear comes from not knowing. Right? True. That comes from xenophobia and racism or whatever. Yeah. So if yeah. you don't know what's happening, you're afraid. Yes. If you know what's happening, you are aware of the risk, but you're not afraid. If you look at the wolf and you see, look at the wolf and say, this wolf is going to attack, you go away and you're not afraid of it. You just respect the wolf. You're not afraid of the wolf. And someone said uh, this, uh, I think it was uh, Holland actually uh, so said, uh, oh, I don't know how she said it. She said, fear. Oh, yes. She said, she said it like this fear, we don't know it. That's a beautiful quote. You respect the wolf. But you fear nothing. I, I, have, I feel this in Mongolia. You meet Mongolian people, they're very kind. But you don't, you, uh, you don't feel fear. And, and that's an, uh, creative people, they cannot fear. Because you, if you fear, you go into a corner. Yes. It's like this. Uh, th that's one of the uh, features I found with our people. Mm. They're in general not afraid of anything. They exactly. just try to face what is this about, to understand even the small kids. Yes. And, uh, and another thing that kind of connects to this, I wanted to say was, um, oh yes, so problem solving. Because creativity is problem solving, uh -huh. right? Mm. Every, people think that creativity starts with the idea. It mm. never does. Mm -hmm. Creativity starts with a problem, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. it, it starts with a problem or an ap affinity, yes. uh, 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 epiphany. But normally it starts with a problem. Yes. And someone told me that in, in Mongolia, uh, we don't have problems. A, a, a problem is, uh, is a signal to change. That's how we look at it. Great. Well, unfortunately, time is finished. So uh, thank you very much for being so interested in Mongolia, so enthusiastic about our future. Thank you very much. Again, this is a Sitki Khorlet, the idea book. And uh, this gentleman is the, one of the most famous speakers in the world. So let's learn more. Let's think creative. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very interesting. So I want to say that no other man is the fact that he is a fool. No other. Because he is a fool. He is a Frederick Karen, Gorong Alderstein, Amar Chosen. Hidden Zoming Garaz Arctson, the Ginihan of Chodos, Echem Mongol Tobosson, the Gedin of Chodring Arhemgeni Dara in Hunter Giersla. Papa Sanderson, Tadrach Vena, Querla.